So I promised to find out if using something like worm castings or a natural non-synthetic fertilizer would work in the cracky system and so that's what I am hoping to show you with this video. I'm going to start off here. This is two and a half gallons of water and to that I'm going to make like a little tea bag of nutrients. These are worm castings from my worms and I highly recommend doing vermicompost if you're not already. You could obviously buy some worm castings. You could probably even use something like some high quality finished compost. That's been my goal to try to figure out how to use worm castings in my hydroponic system and kind of close the loop on what I'm doing here to grow my own food. So I made this little bag this morning. It's just uh, from an old pillowcase and I use some baling twine. It's just like a gonna act like a tea bag to hold the vermicompost and other nutrients in, uh, kind of suspend this in the water. For two and a half gallons of water, you're gonna want one and a half pounds of worm castings. And to this, I'm going to add kelp. Uh, mine's in powdered form, that's what I have access to. It's about six ounces per gallon. So I need 15 ounces. And then this is going to just sit in the water. And you can just tie that loosely to the handle so it doesn't pop open. We're gonna add Epsom salt for some magnesium. I'm going to do a quarter of a cup. Depending on your situation, you should probably cover that loosely. Just make sure no animals or anything gets in there overnight. And this needs to sit for 24 hours and just allow it to steep. I'm actually going to use a pump and some air stones and just aerate this a little bit. This could speed up the process, but also just oxygenates the water. So that's not necessary, um, but I happen to have the, the stones just for this purpose to make compost tea. So I might as well use it. Uh, you could just, like I said, let this steep for 24 hours and that would be fine too. I'd like this to be as simple as possible. It happens to be that I always have these ingredients on hand. I have my own worm composting tower. I have Epsom salt and I keep kelp on hand for the animals. So they are things that I have around anyway. If you don't normally have kelp, you can order that online or check with a local feed store. I get mine from my local feed store and I want to say it's a 40 or 50 pound bag, but it is something nice to have around and adds a lot of nutrition. We'll check on this tomorrow. Here is our worm cast tea the following day. So it's been about 24 hours and it is ready to go. I'm going to set up some of my cracked key hydroponics right now and plant some seeds. So let's get that started. These are the containers that I use for my cracked key hydroponics. It's just a Sterilite six quart plastic shoe box that I have painted with black spray paint just to keep the light out. I drilled holes in it. These are two inch net cups. I have a whole video on this setup as well as my mason jar crack key system. And, um, but this is what I primarily use now. This holds 11 cups of nutrient solution and it doesn't fill it up to the top. It just fills it uh, about an inch above the bottom of the net cups here. So I don't wanna to go too far with that. Um, and, and we don't wanna fill this all the way up. Again, there's a video that shows you that. So this is two and a half gallons of the worm tea solution. And you would normally take this and mix it with five parts water. So that would be 12 gallons of water. Uh, but I don't have a big container available right now. So I want to take just a little over two cups. So about two and a quarter cups of the worm tea and the rest will be plain water. That's going to make this one part worm solution and five parts plain water. I'm going to pour just my filtered water in here. That is 
eight cups. I need to do one more cup. Now I'm going to add the warm tea solution, about two and a quarter cups. Seems that I always have a helper here with me. I'm going to place my lid on top, and you should be able to see there that the water level comes up about between a half inch and a full inch into the net cups. Now those net cups, each one will get a grow plug. These I just reuse over and over again. And um, I'll have a link to them below. I've probably used them dozens of times now. Um, but I'll get some seeds. We'll pop a couple seeds in there and then see how this does. This is my seed case trying to stay organized. And of course I have a video linked to this. And here's my lettuce section. So the tops of these will now get covered in clay pebbles and that is just to keep the light off of the top of the grow plug. That just prevents mold from growing on top of those grow plugs and keeps the plant nice and healthy. And that'll go up here on the shelf. I have the shelving unit set up here. Again, all explained in several videos that I have and I'll link those below in the description. And I do have my grow lights hanging up here. I have a link to those too. They're very cost effective uh, and kind of make it a little bit less intimidating as far as getting started with growing indoors because grow lights can be extremely expensive. So I'll link those below and I do have videos on these lights. Okay, so that was more than enough to plant seven, 14 of my shoe boxes and I did a variety so you'll see here I labeled everything I have the spotty trout back Ethiopian kale Chinese kale two things of romaine romaine tends to do really well some marvel lettuce I have a mixed kale here tatsoi chard pak choy Bloomberg spinach and matador spinach here and spinach has been kind of my nemesis it takes so long to sprout, but I thought I'd do a whole variety here. This is day four, and we have some Ethiopian kale popping up here. And I saw, let's see, that is spotty trout back lettuce coming up. Um, there's a Chinese kale I can see right there popping up as well and waiting on everything else but it's uh, day four and we definitely have some growth happening on our Kratky system that is using the worm compost tea and uh, that's all a good sign. So these were started on I believe it was September 26th or the 27th and today is November 6th. So just under six weeks of growth on these. I think they're doing really, really well, quite possibly better than some of my other attempts. <laughs> uh, here is another row that I started. This is some red Russian kale here. I have tatsoi rainbow chard. There's a nice bright yellow one there. And a little bit of spinach here. So I do have two containers that of pak choy and Bloomberg spinach that did not grow and I'm assuming it's because those were really old seeds so I don't think it's the system at all. I just think it I have this tendency to hang on to seeds for a really long time and um, some of these seeds just aren't quite as viable as they normally would be but I'm really happy about the matador spinach. I've always seemed to struggle with getting spinach to grow. So it all looks good. I could start harvesting some of these larger outer leaves and probably stimulate some more growth. Same with these down here. Um, again, it's only been about five weeks. So I'm very happy with the progress, especially considering this is my first attempt of, with using worm casting tea instead of my usual nutrients. 
and you can see some root growth in there. So again, I have not added any nutrients or water or anything in these containers since I planted the seeds in late September. And I think this is a pretty successful experiment. I did bring in some comfrey roots that I dug up before everything froze and I have some nice leaves coming in. So I think I'm going to try a comfrey compost tea as well and see how that does in the next round of these Kratky containers. And I will keep you guys informed when I get those ones going. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to see you again.